welcome back. Today is going to be a quick little bookshelf tour because I finally cleaned up. Woohoo! So I'm just gonna be going through my bookshelf. Honestly, there's only like four like of these cubes, so it probably won't take too long. But I'm really proud of it, so I want to show it to y'all. So this is my bookshelf. It is as close to rainbow as I can achieve right now. I have a lot of books that don't really fit, like Southernmost doesn't really fit in any particular color. So I know that's a pretty controversial book organization pattern, but honestly, I have so few books that I don't have to worry too much about like being able to find a book because it's not like an alphabetical order or anything or like organized by genre. Anyway, so over here we've got sort of the red book. So we've got Axiom's End by Lindsay Ellis, Thrill by Lindy West, A.E.T. by Roxane Gay, Your Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Over here we've got I guess these are really the only two orange books. <laughs> Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng and The Alchemist by Apollo Coelho. But look at this edition. It's really, man, everything is really stuck together. But um, it's a gorgeous edition. It's the 25th anniversary edition, as you can see, and I got it from the Vermont Bookshop. I'd read this book in high school, and I haven't reread it since. I really want to, because I feel like as someone in their early 20s this is pretty applicable but yeah it's just a gorgeous cover so i was like i need to get this okay my head to put the camera down while i put this back in there let's see if i can do it ah! okay i'm gonna put the camera down for a second i'll be right back okay so now we've got the yellow books so we've got the gentleman's guide to getting lucky which is sort of like 1.5 in the duology that's the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue and the lady's guide to piracy and something else i can't remember the name of the i'll put the the name of the other book in there but uh, this was originally only released to people who pre-ordered the second book, but then the author ended up publishing it and making it available. So I ended up getting it and it's super great. It's sort of just like a fluff thick type of read. It's super short. It is great. If you liked the first and second book in the duology, I would highly recommend it. So this book is actually my fiance's book, but I needed some more yellow. So I took it and put it over here. <laughs> It's How to Lose a War at Sea, which is honestly, it's written in a pretty like accessible way. Like I have said that I don't really like nonfiction. This is definitely nonfiction, but I was able to enjoy it. So here is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This caused quite, quite a stir in the book community last year. Honestly, I liked it more than most people did, but I don't know. I feel like it's hard to pull off a good prequel, but I enjoyed getting to like be submerged in the Hunger Games universe again. Then we got another green book along with The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is Shirley Jackson's Let Me Tell You. After I watched The Haunting of Hill House series, I got super into Shirley Jackson. I read The Haunting of Hill House, her story, which the show is based on, and loved it. And so I wanted to read more of her stuff. So this is sort of like a compilation of some of her short stories. Then we got an Arabic book and two French books. And then A Mail Called Av, which is super great. Frederick Backman has written a lot and his work has gotten lots of praise. And I really have enjoyed the book. It's just a little bit too real. I think I need to wait and read this when I'm in a better headspace. Then right here, we've got my favorite book of all time. This is How You Lose the Time War. It's great, I love it. Maybe I'll make a whole video about it at some point. Then we've got Less, Marriage of a Thousand Lies, both great queer books that I put in my underrated queer book video. New Orleans Noir, which I really need to read. This is like an anthology of horror short stories. It's a series and they do it based on the city. So there's one for like London and New York and stuff. Oh my gosh, this is also a great book. House in the Cerulean Sea. Um, I'd highly recommend Great Queer Book. Oh, Out East by John Glenn was so disappointing. It got a lot of hype and I just did not, I did not see what other people saw in it. Refugees is another book that I really need to read. Again, it's sort of one where I think I need to be in a better headspace. Aristotle and Dante, classic, great book. The Charlotte Holmes series is also really amazing. Uh, I haven't seen this talked about a whole lot on booktube, but I highly recommend if you're into like 
Sherlock, obviously, and then like just mysteries in general. Then we got Oscar Wilde, another classic. Convenience Store Woman is hilarious and I would highly recommend it. Severance I also need to get to, it's about a pandemic and people were like, you should read it right now and I tried and I was just like, this is reminding me too much of what's happening right now and I just can't. Paper Girls is a really great graphic novel, so I would highly recommend that. It's sort of like if like all those like coming of age stories about like boys adventuring in the 80s, like it's that but like for girls. So I would highly recommend that if you're looking for something like that. Then we've got Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse. Fantastic book. I also loved her first book, Homegoing. I just don't have a physical copy of it. Then we've got Heartstopper, which is a really wholesome comic. I feel like everyone on the internet has heard of Heartstopper. <laughs> Outlawed, which I said in a previous video is not really my fave. Tinderbox, which is super good. It's about try to get it off the shelf. Ooh, this is, this might be a bad idea. This is actually about a fire that happened at a gay bar in New Orleans. And I read this when I was trying to read a lot more about like gay history back in like 2018, I think. But this is a fantastic book. It gives a lot of really great historical context about the unique situation for gay people in New Orleans because of like the influence of the Catholic Church, but also the fact that New Orleans sort of has the reputation of being a place that you can go and be accepted if you're someone who has historically been marginalized. So I would highly recommend this. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Again, I feel like Taylor Jenkins Rita has been talked about a lot on book two, but I mean, well worth the hype. She's releasing another book this year that I'm super excited about reading. I think it's coming out in June, maybe. Good Omens, did a whole video about this. It's fantastic. These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I've seen this talked about a little bit on book two, but it's like a retelling of Romeo and Juliet set in 1920s Shanghai. Character development is great. It's very engrossing, I would recommend. Oh, I got into the Magicians TV show and I wanna read the book and I got it on sale from the bookstore and I just haven't gotten to it yet. Another Arabic book, Les Mis. Again, this is just like a really pretty edition. I've already read it, but it just looks really pretty. Miseducation of Cameron Post, great queer book about conversion therapy. Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls by T. Kira Madden, also great queer book and coming of age story in general. Southernmost by Silas House. I talked about this in my underrated queer book video. Me by Elton John. I mean, this was like in bookstores everywhere, so I'm sure you've seen it, but honestly, I highly recommend it. I saw the movie about him and the like biopic and it was really good. And the book just goes into more detail. It definitely can be a little bit difficult to get through at times because it's very like name droppy and like goes into a lot of detail. Um, about the more music side of things, which wasn't as interesting to me as like the recounting of his life, I guess. But it depends on what you're into, I guess. Turtles All the Way Down by John Green was honestly, I think this is my favorite book that he's written so far because he personally struggles with OCD. The depiction of it in the book obviously comes from a very personal place and I really appreciated the opportunity to get to know the experience of someone who struggles with OCD through this book. Out of the Woods. I did a video about this. Uh, I think I talked about it in my underrated queer lit video, but it is great. I don't know if it's available in the US because I got this in the UK, but if you can get a hold of it, I would recommend it. Hunger by Roxane Gay, one of my favorite memoirs of all time. She is a fantastic writer <laughs> and I'm trying to do her book club this year, but I feel like I'm already behind and I need to get the books, but she's a fantastic writer. This talks a lot about her experience with, as the title indicates, with self-image and, and I just really appreciate the way that she tackled that in her book. Small Fry by Lisa Brennan Jobs. So this is a, it's a memoir about Steve Jobs' daughter that he sort of like had a an interesting relationship with, let's say. I thought it was interesting, but it's definitely, as you can see, like a bit long. And so it's definitely more slow paced, but she's also a fantastic writer so like it's definitely a really good book it's just it can be difficult to get through at times more french yeah the rest of this is just french books most of them from my thesis but you know so this is my bookshelf thank you for coming along yeah i'm i'm really like happy that i finally got everything organized because i think it looks really nice and it'll be fun to film in front of like a more put together set in the future and of course i've got my like my christmas lights that make me feel happy and then up here, I just got like a calendar from Paper Source and some plants that I have honestly been neglecting a little bit. But anyway, thank you for joining. Have a great day.